Good morning. We've had a lot of requests for our acorn meal recipe. So we're going to take you through the shelling process, which is what we're doing now. We've been saving up these little nutcrackers we've got from op shops over the years. It's always good to do this job um, communally. Um, have an endless pot of tea going, have a good yarn, invite a whole lot of friends over if it's not a time of social distancing. <laughs> and um, uh, because it, this is actually the most time consuming part. But if you like, have lots of time, it's ideal. Yeah. Let's be with the acorns. And if you're developing the home economy, now that the global formal economy is imploding, well, this is a really great technique and process. There's uh, acorns throughout most of southern Australia um, and they're dropping their free gifts at the moment. Um, yeah, so the way that I crush an acorn is put it on its the side of the nutcracker end to end like that, as you can see, and then a little bit of crushing and then it basically enables you to get the shell off. The shells can be used for fire lighters or mulch or you can do a biochar um, with them, whatever you want to use the waste product for. But oak leaves are fantastic in a compost. They're very alkalizing their leaf. So good in acidic soils, which are quite um, predominant in Southern Australia. So after you've got a nice generous bowl, which we have here, thanks you guys. Um, the next stage is to steep out the tannins. So we're gonna go inside and do that now. Okay, so basically um, I've got a pot of boiling water. Um, I put in a bowl of acorns. You can break them up, the acorns. They'll get broken up in the next uh, two or three steepings. So, um, and we're going to grind them eventually. Bring it back to the boil and then take it off the stove for 20 minutes. So we do this process with English oak, which is the most common oak in this part of uh, central Victoria. Uh, we do it five times. We'll just wait for that to steep and we'll come back for the next stage. Okay, so here's the first steeping. I'm just about to uh, strain out that water. You can see how deep and thick and black it is, almost mm. like the coffee itself. Mm, it smells amazing. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a of water, just to wash it off any excess tannins. I've got one pot already on the stove, so that will be for the second steep, and then this will be the third. So to have two pots rotating um, for this process is just speeds things up a bit. Okay, I'll go and put that on. What I'm going to do before I do the third steeping is to just crush up the acorns more. So any of these full acorns or half acorns get at least quartered, if not um, eight. Um, it'll just, again, help leach out as much of the tannins as possible. Okay, so the acorns have been steeped five times now. The less color, the more neutral the flavor. And now the next stage is after the five steepings, 
leaving each one to soak for uh, 20 minutes before um, straining and rinsing is to then is to dry them. You can either dry them in a dehydrator or put them on a fly screen rack, which we've got from the tip and cut down. We've got lots of these over the years from our local, um, what we call our salvage center. Um, so just spread them out. They're going to be quite heavy and these little frames are a bit flimsy. So you kind of need to have your arm under the middle when you carry them out just to support and they're going to go out in the sun there's actually not much sun outside but mm. they will dry once the sun comes out they'll dry pretty quickly um, you can also put them um, above the fire we've got um, drying racks above our fire so. okay we're back um, the acorns have been out in the sun. We've actually had some sun here um, in the last few days and have more than more or less dried out um, the acorns. There are a few that feel a little bit uh, soft and moist, but at least dry enough to start to um, uh, winnow the husks or blow the husks off. So if you were going to then convert this to flour, uh, you would put them in a, either a mortise and pestle, which is a lot of hard work, um, to grind them into a flour, um, or to pulverize them into a flour. Otherwise, um, we've got an old uh, food processor, so where uh, we'll, we'll put them in there. But I'm actually thinking the last few days that I'd I really want to, we've got a whole lot of hops that we've just picked. We've got heaps of honey. So I'm going to make an acorn honey hops beer. Here's the, the dried acorns. Yeah, if you're on the road um, and it's more of a survival situation, you can actually just collect acorns and throw them into the fire and roast them. Put them on the coals, get a whole handful, put them on the coals, get them out, cool them down after probably 10, 15 minutes. So put them on in their skins? Yeah, put them on in their shells and then um, break them open and um, they should be pretty well uh, cooked by then. And if you add a bit of salt, um, you can... Mm. They're actually pretty desirable, much more desirable than just eating raw acorns. Mm. Yeah. So quite a neutral flavor now. You don't have the astringent, mm. um, funny, velvety taste on your mouth when you eat them. So the smell that's entering the house is really delicious at the moment. It's like toasted cookies. Um, that's the sort of smell you want. You, you obviously want to avoid burning. So to just keep agitating and putting the bottom ones onto the top and stirring through to make sure that they all get evenly toasted is pretty critical. Again, you can do this in the oven and roast them. You've just got to keep a very close eye on it. So that should be enough uh, learning for you to get us uh, going. You can use acorn meal for cookies. You can use it, as I said before, toasted uh, for um, coffee and beer. There may be, um, you know, pancakes and cakes. It, it can even just supplement uh, your grain. So if you're running out of grain and you don't have much more, maybe use 50% acorn meal with, say, buckwheat or millet or uh, spelt or, you know, even um, common old wheat. Um, it may reduce your dependency on monocultural crops, which are a huge problem to butt the biospheres of the world. So tree crops, this is where permaculture started, uh, looking at how um, perennial ecologies or uh, forest ecologies operate and how do we mimic or how do we uh, participate in perennial food systems.